just ignore the naysayers. They tell you, you cannot be governor of California. I tell them, uh, what is wrong with this state and how do we fix it? We have meetings, I become governor. Hey, f*** you naysayers, you know? I'm 78 years old, I kick your ass. Hi everybody, it's Mark Taylor Canfield here in Seattle in the recording studio in Rock and Roll City. Uh, not far from the Seattle Center where we're hanging out. Uh, having a great time tonight, but uh, I wanted to tell you a little story about Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's right, uh, Arnie, who actually came to town many years ago in Seattle to help open uh, a Nike Town store, which I think got vandalized during the World Trade Organization protests here later. Uh, you know, in Seattle, celebrity is not always a popular thing. Let's put it that way. It's kind of an anti rock star town sometimes, so people weren't all that hip to an L.A. star coming to Seattle and causing a big ruckus and, you know, throwing down the red carpet or whatever, so people kind of ignored him. Um, but my interaction with him took place during a, a so-called business conference, okay? I'm not going to mention... Uh, well, okay, well, Grant Cordone is the guy who put, puts on this um, 10 times business growth uh, concert, or, uh, excuse me, conference. You can tell where my head's at. I'm a musician, so I've been thinking about a show coming up um, I'm performing at a national, or actually a state, uh, political convention soon. But um, Grant Cordon produce, you know, <clears throat> helps, uh, who organizes this thing. It's kind of his thing, him and his wife. And um, it's quite expensive to attend this business conference. It happens once a year. Um, I believe it costs about $20,000 to sit in the front row um, during this conference. And... Um, Long story short, some people decided to donate the money to buy a ticket for me. Well, I, I decided not to go for multiple reasons, but <clears throat> they did allow me to s become part of a VIP room um, on Zoom during this conference for three days, three days in a row. Imagine that, for three days, um, listening to people talk about how rich they are. But anyway, um, they're were several speakers, you know, in the past and at this conference that, you know, kind of alerted to me about what I was dealing with. Um, one, a keynote speaker was Donald Trump. Um, so that concerned me a bit. I'm going to a business conference or I'm participating, excuse me, in a business conference. Um, and I'm going to learn tips from a guy who's been, been indicted like 90 times or something, or there's 90 pending charges or something, you know, in multiple states. I'm, I'm thinking maybe not the best person to be learning business ethics from. But, um, you know, so that was a that was a concern. And then uh, the next person they mentioned was going to be a keynote speaker was Tucker Carlson. And a lot of these people, they keep their names quiet until the last minute. And then they announce it just before they, they speak. So nobody really knows who some of these major speakers are. But there have been, you know, in the past, it's been like Tom Brady, you know, one of my heroes. Um, and all sorts of people, you know, that were very interesting guests. Snoop Dogg, you know, all, all sorts of people. But... This time, you know, it took a conservative slant, which I believe is probably you know, a reflection of a lot of the people involved in this conference and, and probably Grant himself. But um, they, you know, had Republicans on. They had um, Anthony Scaramucci, um, former press secretary for, or press spokesman, press secretary for Donald Trump during his administration. Um, and he told a joke about that Queen song, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, where... Uh, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, can you do the Fandango? Well, Scaramucci told the story about how he loved that song when he was in high school. So he thought, hey, uh, maybe if I learn the Fandango, then I'll be really popular with some of the girls in, in my school. And he said, so he did learn the Fandango. Um, and yet he said, I'm here to tell you it didn't help me with the girls. So there you go. There's one bit of uh, a takeaway. Um, some advice from this business conference is don't learn the Fandango. But in any case, you know. Makes me wonder because one of my favorite ZZ, my favorite ZZ Top album actually, and I often use Billy Gibbons' guitar sound as kind of a a reference, you know, sound in the studio here. Um, Fandango is what it's called. It's an amazing album, fantastic album. One half of it is live, one half is studio. It's where those famous songs like Tush come from. Um, anyway, amazing sound, but. Um, so back to the story, I was at this conference, I was participating in this conference. Um, so we have this green room, uh, VIP room, 
that I have access to because of these people who donated, you know, the ticket. Um, I w wouldn't have paid for the ticket myself. Uh, these are really, really high-level business conferences. Uh, really expensive to get take part in. There's a lot of billionaires involved. Um, very wealthy, famous people. Um, but one of the speakers was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, he was actually the last speaker in the three-day conference, um, and it had been leaked sort of a little bit the night before that he might be one of the speakers. Uh, so I wasn't completely surprised when they announced, you know, next up to speak is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, that was great. He did a keynote speech. And even though, you know, he and I probably differ a lot uh, on political issues, uh, he, you know, he did kind, of, did kind of a positive, inspiring sort of speech, you know, so I have to hand it to him. You know, he, he it was it was not all about him either, which was nice, although most of it was, of course. Uh, <laughs> but afterwards, he... Uh, they announced, okay, for those of you in the green room, uh, the VIP green room um, on Zoom, uh, we're going to have Arnold Schwarzenegger on just to take your questions uh, after he speaks. And I, would, I was thinking, wow, this is great. I actually had something else I was supposed to be doing and people I needed to meet and, and stuff. So I was kind of looking you know, at the clock thinking, I got to get out of here. I can't wait for Arnold Schwarzenegger. But they said, if you have a question for Arnold, go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll pick the best questions and we'll ask him. So I'm thinking like, what the hell? Hey, yeah, let's ask a question of Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I typed in something really quick without really thinking about it. And I believe it was something like, uh, uh, what is your um, important, most? what is the most important lesson you've learned as a bodybuilder and actor and business owner? Um, I mentioned business owner because it was a business conference after all. Although he did spend most of his time talking about bodybuilding and acting, which I thought was funny. Um, so he comes back to the green room. They introduce him. I'm getting ready to leave. I'm putting on my coat and I hear them. Somebody say, uh, hey, Mark, it looks like they're going to ask your question. I'm thinking, oh, whoa, how did this happen? So I run back in and uh, apparently the, the moderators chose my question as one of them to ask him. So I had to wait around now and see what he had to say. And it was the funniest thing, actually, I've ever seen. Uh, his answer to, you know, what is your the biggest lesson you've learned? He says, Just uh, not the necessary. Uh, I think it's not someone's answer. Just say nothing. Say ignore the naysayers, because they, uh, they will tell you so many things that are bullshit. You know, like, uh, oh, you cannot... Uh, I, I have a hard time imitating him, but, you know. Nice. I think it's not someone else's answer. Say, say nothing. Say ignore the naysayers, because they tell you... They say, I don't, you cannot become a uh, world-class bodybuilder, you know. A crazy idea. You have crazy ideas, he says. Uh, but say no so to the naysayers. They are crazy. They do not know you, so you follow your dream. Follow your dream. So he says, uh, I am 78 years old. I have birthday coming up. I am 78 years old, and I will kick your ass. Uh, so you take that, naysayers. I say to you, I, I kick your ass. So he reminded me of um, that old Saturday Night Live uh, skit, uh, especially the really famous one with Pat, that where Patrick Swayze was the, was the guest, and it, it was Hans and Franz, right? The bodybuilders, you know, we want to pump you up, and they, it was kind of they were kind of imitating, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So to hear him say that, uh, I was cracking up. I I was just in tears and laughter, you know. I do fifty bench presses per day. What do you do? Nothing. You're stupid. <laughs> So that's my my bad impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I will probably never forget that, you know, and I will remember his words because, yes, in my life, there have been many naysayers who said, you know, you you, you can't make mus you know money doing music. You can't become a musician or a composer or travel around the world or, you know, have your music honored in Europe and become a resident composer at a major university. You can't do that. Uh, well, guess what? I say to the naysayers, <laughs> just ignore the naysayers, whatever they say to you. You know, ignore them. Like if they are friends, family, your wife, you know, ignore them. They are naysayers, they not know you. You follow your dream. I am 78 years old, I kick your ass. <laughs> I, was, I was calling my, my buddy tonight and t telling him this story about uh, Arnold and he was cracking up so I thought yeah I should probably do this on videotape too but it's one of the stories from my book uh, you know 
my rock and roll stories. I think that's the tentative title at this point or something. You know, it's like my crazy rock and roll stories, something like that. Because there are many of them, and that's that's one that I I will add to you know some of the amazing eccentric uh, characters that I've met throughout my life, or have interacted with on on Zoom conferences or phone calls or whatever. Uh, I would say that Arnold Schwarzenegger is one. <laughs> and as I said, I you know I I would say to him, I ignore your politics, okay? Arnold, I ignore your politics. I do not agree. But I do agree that you should tell naysayers to hiss a road. Get out of your life. Forget naysayers. Ignore them. They are stupid. I am not 78 years old, but I kick your ass figuratively with my electric guitar and my voice, you know? <laughs> so this is Mark Taylor Canfield. Just remember, ignore the naysayers. <laughs> they know the thing. Follow your dream. <laughs> you can become Mr. Universe and Governor of California. Or singer in a rock band. You are good. Go for it. This is Mark Taylor Canfield. And whatever you, you dream about doing, whatever you love doing, go for it. And don't listen to the naysayers. Thanks for listening to the MTC Report and watching. And uh, click the subscribe button down there and the like button and share it with your friends. You know, if you like what's going on here. I, I hope to do more videos like this because I think it's important to tell my stories for one reason or another. Um, hopefully they're entertaining and you enjoy them. But otherwise... Um, you can always listen to Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> this is Mark Taylor Campo for the MTC Report. Peace out.